Hello, brothers and sisters and Hard Drills family. Sorry if I got a message up as I should. I'm still coming out of a nasty cold and I had fogginess. The other day I pulled a random message after not hearing from the Lord about intimacy with Him. We speaking to Him and declare how we can get to a point that when we're in prayer, we're rushing to get out of that time with Him to get things done. We're thinking of all the things we have to do and accomplish rather than relishing in the Lord's presence and just being with Him. She said it's like spending quality time with your spouse. But in your head, you're thinking, I wonder when we'll be done with this so I can go and finish my project. If your spouse heard you say that in your head, they would be so hurt. And we forget Jesus hears our every thought and how it breaks his heart. I was so guilty because the truth is, my prayer time has been so dry and tough to just get through prayer and still having that overwhelming sense of all the responsibilities and things that need to get done. So when it's dry, rather than pray longer as Holy Spirit instructed St. Faustina to do and had Jesus do in Gethsemane, I'd just rather run and do something more exciting. Sorry, just being honest, guys. How many of us are guilty of that? And the scripture is in Matthew 26, 36, 42. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled, then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you might not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. So in the midst of Jesus' trouble and sorrow, he went away and prayed again for the second time. He tarried in prayer, and that is what he desires for us all to do, especially when we feel dryness, sorrow, or no connection with him. Still tarry in prayer. May the Lord give us the grace. So I was struggling this morning, but despite my lack of connection, I still want to step out in faith and needed to get a word, if not for myself, for the flock. So after receiving the Lord, I said, Jesus, what's on your heart? I decided to pull Raymond's because I began to get anxious suggestions. I wasn't sure if it was from the Lord or not. My Bible promises were giving me mixed readings, so I decided to get a Raymond from the website. And the second was about forgiveness of offenses. And the third was about total surrender allowing the Lord to cut us up in pieces by wounding us with his love and giving him every piece if he decided to do so. My heart was pained because I was hoping it wasn't confirming the suggestions I was getting. I'm confused. Jesus began. Confusion is part of your surrender. It's a cross, beloved. Surrender it all to me. And if I would wound you in love, cutting you to pieces, then tell me every piece is yours. And if I don't, surrender that too. I want you to stay focused and lay your curiosity down for now. I'm faithful to always make things clear, to bring things to the light of my truth and it's time. So don't worry yourself. The best thing you can do now is to just pray and receive my peace. It's in your doubt and anxiety the enemy gets in and begins to magnify things and bring suggestions and lies that many times are not true. The torment continues because of your lack of trust in me. When you trust me, those attacks against your mind and false projections won't stick or cause you to waver in any way. Do not fear, my beloved one. All will be well. I stopped and took a deep breath. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. And he chimed in and add, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I know you are in a stressful, intense situation right now. That is the right word for you. You are being cooked under pressure. Yes, Lord, I feel like a frog in hot water. Well, don't jump, he smiled. (laughs) Sickness comes with his own crosses. And as an aside, guys, sickness comes with his own crosses. Tiredness, exhaustion, short fuse and temperament, you name it. The devils love to come rushing in when you're sick because you're the most vulnerable. Then I've become a new auntie recently and have a newborn at home. It was kind of unexpected, and a few times I've had to watch my new nephew as I get a knock on the door during my prayer time to please take the child. How can I get mad? As a laugh thinking, Lord, I think this is preparation. And now I see how the new mothers who are intercessors in our group find it hard to do all their priestly duties and pray too. I did, however, murmur about the food being gone. 
and news that I bought, which is just selfishness on my part. We're truly doing communal living. Jesus continued, I'm refining you, beloved, and all my brides. The tensions of the day will soon cease, and you'll feel my grace more and more to do all that I've asked of you, and all that is asked of you. Where you are, all that you are doing is the most necessary to prepare you to be able to juggle multiple responsibilities as a mother, not only as a spiritual mother running a community, a wife and a servant to all. You must be focused, beloved. Do what you have in your heart to do, but each day, I want you to abandon your daily task list to me. Do not resent frustrations, delays, and interruptions, because there will be many. You must have the care of my mother, who guarded her heart fiercely and went about from one thing to the next with such peace and tranquility of heart, knowing that what was placed before her was all from my hands. My beloved brides, do not lose heart when you are not able to accomplish the task or goals that you have set for yourself. I never called my brides to be goal-oriented, but rather abandonment-oriented. I want a soul whom will come when called immediately, who will seek my will each day, moment by moment. There are days when you desire to work tirelessly, feeling the pressure of what you feel is procrastination, but rather rush, rush demons causing you to push, become ambitious and self-willed. You see, the devils are very clever. There are aspects of laziness and procrastination, my brides, you have to deal with within your characters. But when I come, I come to convict and even encourage. It's gentle and loving. When you feel an enormous amount of pressure to do, to finish, to complete, to the point where you're not able to get what you want done, and you fall into condemnation, guilt, or discouragement, beating yourself up, then you know the devils are around. If they can get my brides busy like Martha, goal-oriented and ambitious, it will eventually lead to self-will, because you're not driven by my love or my daily instructions. You are driven by your to-do list, which takes a mind of its own. However, if my bride is like Mary, sitting at my feet each day, seeking my presence instead, you are rather filled with my peace. You know my will, and you can see my will in the delays and interruptions of the day, and take it as they come. You receive it with joy and peace, offering your service to the one whom interrupted you, as if you are offering your service to me. Your heart stays free of complaints, murmuring, grudges, or even offense. You end the day knowing you did the best you could and respond in the best way, in charity, love, and hospitality. Now that is what I call a fruitful day, not getting your to-do list done. Okay, Lord, I see. Please help me. I feel terrible with so many things backed up. Well, then ask me to help you to use your time wisely and stay single-minded. Remember, the devils will continue to get you distracted by your feelings. Don't allow it. Just keep moving forward in service to me or to another with peace and joy. I'm giving you the grace, my bride, to say and take this prayer to heart. Pray, Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. I empty myself in any task that I may want done today. I ask that you would fill me with your will and fill me with your desire and your love today so I may give you a hand with whatever is asked of me by whomever. And that was the end of Jesus' message. God bless you, family. Please continue to pray for us as I pray for you guys.